real quick before we get started i know i told you that this was inspired by the ovenly bakery in brooklyn new york and um it's called the secretly vegan salted chocolate chip cookie because even people that are not vegan and don't have an egg sensitivity they cannot tell this is an eggless cookie okay so here we go this is what you need for this cookie you need two cups of all-purpose flour one teaspoon of baking powder three-fourths teaspoon of baking soda a half a teaspoon of fine sea salt one and one-fourth cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips or you can use bittersweet um, you do not have to use all of those chocolate chips it depends on your ratio that you like some people like a greater ratio of chocolate chips than cookie and some people like more cookie than chocolate chips so it depends on what you like also you need a half a cup of sugar a half a cup of brown sugar half a cup plus one tablespoon of neutral oil I have canola and it worked awesome you can use grapeseed and and also um, vegetable oil I believe and just some neutral oil uh, five tablespoons of water which is basically one fourth cup of water plus one tablespoon and also coarse sea salt for topping all right so that's all you need and we're going to go ahead and get oh i use you guys i added a little bit of cinnamon like i said a little less than one eighth teaspoon of cinnamon and vanilla and imitation almond extract because they did not use any flavoring at all and they were talking about how good it was so those are just my little additions it does not change the recipe at all um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. You're going to put your dry ingredients in one bowl and you're going to have your wet ingredients in the main bowl. I've already put two cups of flour, the all purpose flour in here. I've already put in the one teaspoon of baking powder, three fourth teaspoon of baking soda, the half a teaspoon of sea salt. You can see it there. And I'm going to go ahead and put in chocolate chips. It says one and one fourth of a cup. And it's just uh, flour all in the cup. Um, it says one and one fourth cups of semi sweet chocolate chips or bittersweet. I am using three fourths of, of a cup. I do not like as many chocolate chips in mine. I like a, a larger cookie ratio versus. Um, chocolate chip I like a little bit more cookie than chocolate chips so what you do and it's, this recipe is a little different than others you're going to put your chocolate chips in the flour to coat them so they do not sink to the bottom of your cookies so that's a little bit of a different thing too all right we're going to go ahead and get our wet ingredients in here okay we have a half a cup of sugar a half a cup of firmly packed brown sugar. And now I'm going to put in the half a cup plus one tablespoon of neutral oil. I am using canola oil. Canola oil is good for baking. Right now I'm adding the one fourth cup of water plus one tablespoon of water. And remember that the, the oil and the water replaces the eggs and the butter. Hey guys, so the original recipe from Ovenly Bakery does not call for any flavoring or anything, but I love flavoring in my cookies. So at this time, if you're going to add anything, this is when you're going to add the flavoring. I add one teaspoon of vanilla, a half a teaspoon of imitation almond extract, and about one eighth teaspoon of cinnamon. So if you're going to do any adding, add it right now. Now the uh, recipe says you're supposed to whisk this pretty good. Um, so I'm not using, you know, just my hand with the whisk. Some people just do it in a bowl and they just use a whisk. I am using my mixer because it can take a long time to whisk this to the consistency that you need. Um, usually do it about a minute, minute and a half, possibly two. But you want to get it well combined because this is oil and sugar and water and you really have to blend this. And it is looking really good. It came together really good. So we're going to go ahead and stop it. It's been going for two minutes. 
Now, I am going to change from the whisk attachment to the beater. And I have an edge scraper, a bowl scraper on mine, which I love. And if you all, I don't know if you all are going to be using just your hand or if you're in the market for a mixer, go down below and I'll leave my link for this KitchenAid mixer. I love my KitchenAid. Love it, love it, love it. So you can follow the link and go to Amazon and purchase this if you've been wanting this KitchenAid. It is a beautiful machine and it works wonders. I've had it for a while now and I love it. Anyway. I'm going to lock it. So we want to, we don't want to whisk this in. I'm just going to blend. That's why I'm using, I'm going to turn it down to the lowest setting. I'm just going to basically be blending this in, almost like a folding in if you're doing it by hand because I have it moving so slow. Okay, you don't want to overbeat this. You just want it to come together. You don't want too much air in it or anything. You don't want a tough cookie. You want a nice tender cookie. So, just until it's well combined. There's a good mix there, and that's it. At this point, if you like walnuts in your cookies, you can put them in now and just kind of fold them in. Also, if you don't, you just, we're just going to go ahead with the process and scoop these into balls. And here we go with all this beautiful dough. And I do not have a traditional scoop with a um, release on it. So I'm just going to kind of put it up against the bowl and make a little ball. Don't press it together. Don't roll. I see a lot of people rolling and pressing. You don't want to do that with these cookies you just want to form it just want to form it that's going to keep it light but a good consistency and you're going to place it right on your pan so i'm going to go ahead and finish these up just give it a little squeeze just enough to form it just like that and place it on your cookie sheet so i'm going to get this filled and i'll be back Okay, so here these are. I'm making two batches, I'm making one for today and then one for tomorrow, which will, you will see on the video when I eat it after the second day. This um, specific tutorial that I learned from the Ovenly Bakery, they have a method to where you refrigerate the dough overnight and then scoop it out and put it on the, the uh, pan and then you freeze it for 10 minutes. I found that you do not need to do that for this recipe to come out good. You all know that I take shortcuts here and there, especially when I'm busy. And I just found, when I want chocolate chip cookies, I don't want chocolate chip cookies tomorrow. I want chocolate chip cookies today. So I'm not waiting for tomorrow. Um, so I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator for 10 to 15 minutes, then in the freezer for 10, minutes and then I'm going to bake these. I'm going to put the salt on them right before I put them in the oven, the coarse sea salt. So I'm putting these in the refrigerator for 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm taking these out of the refrigerator in 10 minutes and I'm going to go ahead and put these in the freezer for 10 minutes. As you can see the one in the middle has uh, chocolate chips and walnuts. I'll see if my husband likes the nuts in his chocolate chip cookies. But anyway, I have to put these in the freezer. Okay, so I'm pulling, I'm pulling these out of the freezer. I'm gonna put them in the oven. Warm them in the oven. I'm gonna leave them in here for 10 minutes or until they're ready. So this is how they turned out. They're puffy, they have height. It's crispy on the outside. And let's see how it is on the inside. All right. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that, hopefully you can see it. Hopefully it's focused. Crisp on the outside. Oh my goodness. Woo. 
all kind of warm. Gooey on the inside. Has a nice crust on it. It's done on the bottom and all around. So, this is right after baking. Before I didn't do, um, on this batch, I did not wait the 24 hours. This is right out the oven. So good. So good. Oh my goodness. Delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and do the 24 hour method by now sitting the made cookies or the prepared dough, putting it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Or 12 hours rather, overnight is what I meant to say. And then baking them tomorrow. So I'll show you that. But these are good. All right, guys, so I've gotten the dough out of the refrigerator and it's crumbly. As you can see, it's crumbs on the table. And I've just been kind of fluffing it with a spoon. Now I'm going to dip the dough out with this um, ice cream scooper. And I don't have a formal ice cream scoop, so I'm using this. I'm going to form it in my hand. I'll show you how. So I'm going to get a good heaping mound of it. Kind of smush it down. Ooh, make a ball. And I'm gonna put it, oh shooty. I'm gonna put it right on the baking tray because I'm gonna freeze these. So there's one. And you just want to do this for all of your little dough mounds or dough balls. And keep going. All right, here are all the chocolate chip cookie dough balls all formed and I'm about to put them in the freezer for 10 minutes. Here are the cookie dough balls out of the freezer. I'm gonna put them in the oven, a 350 degree preheated oven for about 14 to 15 minutes. Also, as you see, I've just sprinkled a little sea salt on top, and I'm gonna put them in the oven now. So they took 14, 15 minutes rather in the oven, and there they are right off of the pan. I let them sit on here for about eight minutes, and then transferred them over to this cooling rack, and there they sit. Okay, you guys, this is the baking after the Second day, I mean, how clever is it? Ooh, we all look at that. Look at that. Okay, let me taste it. I couldn't come on camera today, <laughs> but I'm gonna taste it. Mmm, mmm, good. Mm. Yeah, look at that. It's still good, but. You guys, I don't taste a big difference. I even think the method that I used, the refrigerating for 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and then freezing for 10 minutes, and then baking, I think that was a little better. I really do. So, with whichever method you choose, they'll be delicious, but I like the, the first day as fine for me, and plus, when I'm craving a cookie, like I said, when I'm craving a cookie, I want it that day, not the next day. <laughs> so yeah, first day is good for me. So enjoy. Enjoy.